This is Sturgeon with Second Skin Installation, and I'm here today to talk to you about how to soundproof an office. Soundproofing an office is actually not all that challenging to do, but it is something that you need to know what to do, or you can waste a ton of time and effort on things that are not going to make all that much of a difference. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about the difference between soundproofing and acoustics, because that's a mistake a lot of people make. And then we're also gonna talk about the three things that you can do in any of these enclosed smaller offices that's gonna solve 95% of the noise issues that someone might have. If you like the video, go ahead and give us a like. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it. And you can also go on to our website, secondskinaudio.com, where we have a lot of these materials available. And we also have other solutions as well for soundproofing a home or even soundproofing a vehicle. So who might want to soundproof an office? There really are quite a few situations where it makes a lot of sense. And it's something that maybe in some cases is even an absolute necessity. So imagine that you're a doctor's office or some sort of health clinic and you need to have private conversations with your patients. Or maybe you're a law firm and you need to be able to talk to your clients without other people overhearing. Or maybe you work in the HR group of your business and you need to be able to talk to your employees privately. All of these are reasons that you may want to soundproof an office and there's some, again, three simple things you can do to make a lot of progress. So here's a view of an acupuncture and wellness office that is having trouble with patients hearing each other between rooms. You can see we've moved the bed, against the side wall over here. Um, there is a caulk gun that we will come back to. And um, what you can see is that on the wall, they have some acoustic panels. Acoustic panels are excellent for sound absorption and reducing sound inside of a space, but they don't actually reduce sound traveling between spaces, which is a lot of what they've been having issues with. You can also see on the walls here where they've obviously invested in a variety of things to try and reduce the amount of sound. They've got these curtains on the, uh, you know, in front of the blinds, which are actually pretty thin, so they're not absorbing very much sound at all. And then you've also got the blinds themselves, which are maybe helping again some marginal amount, but all of these things are sound absorption. They're not actually doing anything to reduce the sound between rooms. This is one of their biggest problems. As you can see here, they know that they've got sound traveling between their rooms. And if you look behind here, there's a little gap where you can, where between the metal, there's this air gap that's allowing sound to travel between one room and the other. They've attempted to close it up by installing foam here, but unfortunately, foam does not block sound. All foam is good for is absorbing sound. It will not stop sound from transferring from one space to another. This is a very common mis misconception. And unfortunately, they spent a lot of time probably getting in there, ordering the foam, stuffing it in here, taping it in. And unfortunately, it's not really helping them all that at all. So we've looked at the sound absorbing materials that they're using in this, in this office space to try and reduce the sound traveling between rooms. Unfortunately, none of that is actually helping all that much. What they need to do is they need to think about it more in the frame of soundproofing. How do they prevent sound from traveling from one space to another? And in order to do that, they need to seal everything up, just like you would seal up a bathtub or a pool that you don't want water to leak out of. Sound actually behaves a lot like water, where it's always gonna find that weakest point and use that point to leak out. The first place you need to check is the ceiling. As you can see, the drywall actually ends right where the ceiling tiles make contact with it. And so what you have is you have a flanking path over the top of the drywall where there's an empty airspace in the ceiling plenum that allows sound to go through. What happens is that the, the sound waves actually go through the ceiling tiles, which block sound about as well as a piece of cardboard, over the top of the drywall and into the other room. The best way to check on whether or not your drywall goes all the way up to the roof is just to stick your head up there and look. You need to poke your head through the ceiling tile and look to see whether or not there is a gap between the top of the drywall and the roof. If there is, you've got a flanking path. There's two ways that you can fix that plank flanking path. First, do some construction and extend that wall all the way up to the top. That's pretty expensive and usually not the path that people choose. The second option is that you can actually buy dense barrier material to lay on top of those ceiling tiles so that instead of just having some cardboard out there, you have some real density that's gonna be able to block sound. That's the option most people choose to go with. And if that's something that you're interested in looking into, go onto our site at secondskinaudio.com 
and you can see where you can get some of that those ceiling tile backers. So the second thing you need to do is you need to make sure you seal up any other gaps that you may have in the wall. The best way to do this is with acoustic caulk. And one of the most common places you need to use some acoustic caulk is actually at these baseboards. If you were to move this baseboard below the drywall, you'd see probably about a quarter of an inch gap between the bottom of the drywall and the floor. This is a flanking path that's gonna allow sound to travel through, and so you need to seal it up with acoustic caulk. This is another item that's available on secondskinaudio.com. Besides the baseboards, other things you need to be looking for are pipes, fence, electrical outlets, light switches, things like that that may have gaps around them, allowing sound to flank through your drywall. The third and final thing you need to soundproof is the door. In most wall constructions, the door is actually the weakest point. And so what you need is something that we call a door seal kit. And that door seal kit is used to seal up those gaps that you see around the top of the door and then around at the bottom. To know if your door is a good candidate for a door seal kit, first, make sure that you have a solid core door. A hollow core door is not gonna be good at blocking sound. So if you have hollow doors, you need to replace them. And second, make sure you don't have any holes in the door like for a louver or anything like that. All, the door seal kit's gonna seal up all the, the jams in the bottom so that you don't have any sound escaping around through these edges. Not only is your door soundproof, it's also really easy to open and only sealed up when it's closed. Once you've done those three things to seal up each room in your office, now you'll be soundproof. One thing you may notice is that after you've sealed everything up, the acoustics inside of your room may have actually gotten worse. The reason for that is that instead of sound escaping the room into other rooms in your office, now it's trapped and it's bouncing around inside of your room. If this is something that's happening to you, one thing you should consider is some acoustic panels so that you can improve the sound quality inside the room to whatever your desired level is. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. Um, you can also subscribe at the bottom if you want more content like this. Thanks for watching, we appreciate it. And again, for all your soundproofing needs, go to secondskinaudio.com, we've got you covered.